Church and uh, welcome to Freedom Sunday. Um, for those that know uh, Freedom Sunday, or those who don't know, Freedom Sunday we do once every uh, once a month on the third Sunday of every month, and it's all about seeing the captive set free. And this morning I'm, I'm sharing a message on breaking ungodly ties. Now, when I'm talking about ties, I'm referring to to a, something that like, it's called a bond, a joining, or a connection. And uh, this morning I'm going to be sharing on ungodly ties that can affect you in three areas. They are in your spirit, in your soul, and in your body. So we're talking about ungodly soul ties, ungodly flesh ties, or body ties, and I'm talking about ungodly spirit ties. Now, these ties can keep people bound in many different ways. And the, the way to remove these ungodly ties is they need to be broken and or they also need to be renounced. Now, ungodly ties can keep you bound where there may be also unforgiveness present in your heart. So it may also be a fact that you may need to forgive someone to see these uh, afflictions or ties be loosed in the name of Jesus, but will mean that you may need to forgive someone from your heart. You know, just recently I, I was praying for someone who had uh, unforgiveness in their heart and uh, they've been in bondage, I believe, for over 40, maybe 50 years. And even though the person that they couldn't forgive has passed away, for some reason they just couldn't forgive that person from their heart. And um, it, it got to the point where I was trying to pray for this person, nothing was happening, and I literally said to them that until you forgive that person, there's no way you're going to receive your freedom. You need to forgive that person from your heart to see that bondage removed. And I can assure you that unforgiveness is truly a blessing blocker and it can hinder your prayers and it can hinder your healing and freedom. In fact, uh, unforgiveness will also block, could block your salvation. And if you don't believe me or you want reassurance of that from the word, just read um, the book of Matthew chapter 6, the Our Father Prayer, and read the first few verses after that, what Jesus says about forgiveness. So, as I said earlier, Ties are literally what I'm talking about is a bond, something that can keep you in bondage, something that can keep you bound. Now, the Apostle Peter, as I go to my first scripture, uh, uh, sorry, the Apostle Paul, I can read, should be able to read my own writing, it's printed. Uh, the Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians 5.23, if we can get that on the screen, in the New King James Version, he said, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely he says sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our lord jesus christ so we see here that he's saying may you be sanctified made holy in your spirit in your soul and in your body that's where the completeness is in our triune being because we have to understand that we are a triune being we are spirit we are soul and we are body. And when I'm referring to the body, um, it also refers to the flesh. So we can be afflicted in all three of these areas, in our spirit, in our soul, and our body. Now, many years ago, uh, when I was praying over someone, uh, I've been involved in deliverance ministry for many, many years, even back when I had black hair. I'm talking quite a few years ago. <laughs> been well over, well over 25 years, I think, maybe 27 or 28 years. But anyway, but... Um, we always only ever used to pray over breaking soul ties. And one day when I was praying, I felt the leading of the Holy Spirit and, and to, to also break flesh ties and to also break spirit ties. And I was showing this by the Holy Spirit in order to say that for, in order for people to receive complete freedom, yeah. we need to not only break soul ties, but we also need to break flesh ties or body ties and spirit ties as well because... As Paul said in that scripture, sanctification completely needs to be through the spirit, through the soul, and through the body. Now, I want to give you a bit of teaching from the word and um, show you where the, the area of ties comes in as explained in scripture. And uh, my next scripture here from 1 Samuel chapter 18 verse 1 uh, reads up there. If you can see that, praise God. It says, now when he had finished speaking to Saul... The soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. The NIV says, 
Jonathan became one in spirit, one in spirit with David as he loved him as himself. Now, that word knit literally in the Hebrew word means to bind or it means to tie. So he was knit in the soul or one scripture it says he was knit in the spirit. So we see here that according to the word of God that these ties can form through a close personal relationship or a close connection and in this case it was through love yeah the next scripture i want to share with you is from 1 corinthians chapter 6 16 there's no children in here praise god praise god all right um once corinthians 6 16 in the nrv says do you not know know that he who unites himself with a some versions say harlot other versions says prostitute as it says here that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body. For it is said, the two shall be one, the two shall become one flesh. So we see here through intimacy or a sexual relation that the two become one flesh, meaning that there's a flesh tie or a body tie is formed in the act of intimacy. Now, through intimacy, this we're talking here about an on ungodly person or an ungodly flesh tie occurs or an ungodly flesh tie or body tie occurs when we're in a situation where it's in sin or disobedience in here in this case it is through disobedience and ungodly act now might i add that there can also be a transference of demonic and evil spirits when it comes to um, intimacy out of the covenant relationship of marriage as husband and wife. Now, I'm talking here in simple terms, um, the great topics that we're talking about, but uh, it needs to be taught that we're talking about adultery, fornication, and sexual immorality. So when these, these things happen, we can form an ungodly flesh type. Now, uh, we know going back, way back to Genesis, that, that Genesis 2.24 taught us uh, when Adam and Eve were in the garden, as the scripture you can see up there, it says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. That joining is talking about intimacy. And it says the two, or it says they shall become one flesh. And Jesus also quoted this verse uh, as we read in Mark chapter 10, verse 7 and 8, uh, basically saying the same thing. But Jesus added uh, the last bit, he says, so they are no longer, so then they are no longer two, but one flesh. So we see that husband and wife become one in the flesh. And we need to be aware that this is not an ungodly tie. We're talking about the covenant relationship of marriage. So this is a godly tie, not an ungodly tie. Now in saying that without trying to confuse people, uh, and I don't have time to go into this, that when we're talking about a covenant relation between husband and wife, that this is a, a godly tie. But there can be instances, as, as I've experienced in ministry, where one of the, the, the husband or the wife or both of them open the door in, in, in sin, in adultery. Or, and um, that in that situation, an ungodly tie can be formed. But that is a whole other topic in itself. But we have to understand that when we're talking about sexual immorality, immorality or adultery, it can open the door even in a covenant relationship. Um, but I, I don't have time to go into that in great detail. Um, an ungodly tie can also occur through many different ways. And I want to share with you some of these ways. There's a, there's a, bit of, a few topics here that if you can bear with me, but I'm, I'm trying to uh, educate you and show you how these ties form. Now, when we're talking about ungodly ties, these occur generally where there is a sin or disobedience involved, or it can be when you are strongly connected with ungodly people. These ungodly ties, they can occur through uh, a relationship. As I said, we're talking about ungodly relationships. We're talking through sexual contact or intimacy through uh, with a, a connection with uh, ungodly people or out of the covenant of a marriage. And also it can occur through witchcraft and also through controlling spirits. So um, I also need to add um, one another way that these ties can form is through uh, an act of trauma. And when we're talking about trauma, we're talking about things that may have caused you a great shock, uh, fear, or great suffering. So there's, there's quite a few things that can 
allow these ungodly ties to come. But there's one way that we can identify ungodly ties being present, and that's when someone finds themselves in a very bad cycle, or a vicious cycle, over and over and over again. The same bad relationships, attracted to the same type of people who are generally no good for you. They may be people who may be violent, they may be addicted to drugs or alcohol, as a few examples. Is that uh, battery running out there? Oh, either here. I think switch me over. I think the battery's gone flat. Praise you. Oh, that's very loud. That's better? Not too loud? Okay. Um, yeah, I think that battery's gone flat. But, um, I was saying that, you know, through um, bad cycles and um, you may be attracted to people who are no good for you and they may be violent or addicted to drugs or alcohol as a few examples. But I've, I've seen through uh, over the years that, uh, over many years of ministry, that a lot of particularly women can suffer from what I call daddy issues. And I've seen this happen so many times that their father was a drunk or a drug addict or violent and yet despite those women saying that I'll never be in a relationship like that, I'll never be attracted to a man like that, um, you know, I'll never be in a relationship with a man who's a drunk or violent or addicted to drugs, and no matter how much they say it, guess what? Somehow, some way, they end up with someone just like their dad was or even worse. And I've seen this many, many times over the years. And to understand why that happens, it's simply because there's a trauma in, in the soul realm, and it creates a soul type through the anguish, through the through all the, the things that you suffer, it causes great pain in your heart, and that creates a soul type. And that's why you're drawn to people uh, with these bad characteristics, and it can also be a trap of the enemy. Now, I know there's a lot in this, but um, just so I'm trying to give you an overview, so you can understand how these ties form and why they form. Now, I want to read to you a scripture to show you what happens when there is hurt and pain or bitterness, particularly in your heart. And um, this is the reason why people make unwise choices and they can lead to ungodly ties. So if we put on the screen Psalm 73 verses uh, 21 to 22, I'm going to read to you from the NIV at first where it says, When my heart was grieved and my spirit embittered, I was senseless and ignorant. I was a brute beast before you. The New Living Translation says, My heart was bitter and I was all torn up inside. I was so foolish and ignorant, I must have seemed like a senseless animal to you. So we see here in these verses that when someone has a broken heart or bitterness in their heart, they can act out in ways that are stupid or foolish, the scripture tells us, ignorant. Uh, in fact, it says like a senseless animal, as we read in that psalm. But the God's word translation actually says these words. It's not on the screen, but it says, I was like a dumb animal in your presence. So this bitterness in your heart, if it's present, um, it comes from being wounded. And these wounds need to be healed. That bitterness needs to be removed from your heart. And, and they need to be renounced. If there's someone that's hurt you, you need to forgive them. And the way you get healing is also through prayer, but it's also through renewing your mind through the Word of God. This wound or bitterness in your heart um, um, can come through an act of violence. It can come through being abused. It can come from any form of abuse, in fact, whether it be physical or whether it be verbal. But we must remember Ephesians chapter 6. It tells us that our warfare is not against flesh and blood. We do not wrestle against people. And be assured, and please don't be ignorant of this fact, that Satan can use people against you. Satan uses people. He uses flesh and blood to try and attack you, to try and bring you down. And it's usually, unfortunately, those closest to you. The flesh and blood that usually rises up against you is usually those closest to you to try and get you off track, to try and bring you down and to keep you bound or in bondage and lead you into ungodly ties. Now, it can sometimes and does, as I've seen, this can also operate through a Jezebel spirit, as I'll read to you later in the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 20. Now, 
when we're talking about the Jezebel spirit, that's a whole message in itself. But just to give you an overview, the Jezebel spirit really can mislead you. It can lead you astray. It can try and control you, manipulate you and take you completely off course. And the enemy can use people to deceive you, to hurt you, to mislead you, and to divert your attention away from God or walking in his ways. Now, one of the, the enemy's biggest schemes is to get you linked or connected or hooked up to the wrong people, and that's where the ungodly ties begin. Now, I'm talking here, I'm not talking here about godly ties. Please, please be assured, I'm not talking about godly connections i'm talking here simply about ungodly ties i want to make that very very clear well, i want to take you back to genesis chapter 3 verse 13 um, and it reads here that the lord god said to the woman what is it that you have done this is where adam and eve had, had, had been tempted by the devil and they fell into sin and the woman said the serpent deceived me and i ate so she's put the blame on the serpent, saying that the serpent deceived her. And when we look at that word deceived in the Hebrew word, it's actually the word nashar, and it means to lead astray mentally. The enemy deceived them, and he led them astray mentally. So I urge you, please do not be deceived or led astray mentally. But we need to understand that we need to break these ungodly ties with people who may have led you astray, who have a bad influence over you, or who may have uh, been, you've been in that situation where they've completely taken you off course, that is taking you astray. You know, many years ago, my, uh, my, my dad's dad, my granddad, um, often said this saying in his uh, very bad uh, Lebanese accent voice. He often used to say, his Lebanese version of this, he used to say that if you spend a lot of time with the bodgy, in fact, he used to say Bodgie, that was somehow Lebanese version of Bodgie. Um, if you don't know what a Bodgie is, you need to be probably raised up in the 1950s or yeah. uh, 40s. But a Bodgie is a bad person, uh, similar to the Vikings, but it's just a bad person. It was very popular way back before I was even born. Bodgie. 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 But he said that if you spend a long time with a Bodgie, you'll end up being a Bodgie. And he said that, um, that said that many, many, many times I heard him say that. And funny enough, I don't know whether he knew this, but that is actually scripturally based. And Proverbs 22, 24 to 25 tells us, in fact, this is um, saying number three uh, from 30 sayings in the book of Proverbs, found in uh, Proverbs chapters 22, 23 and 24. This is saying number three. And it says in verse 24 of 22 of Proverbs, it says, Make no friendship with an angry man, and with furious with a furious man do not go, lest you learn his ways and set a snare for your soul. The easy to read version, we don't have that version, but it says, Don't be friends with people who become angry easily. Don't stay around quick tempered people. If you do, you may learn to be like them then you will have the same problems that they do. Proverbs 13, 20 from the ERV, again, we don't have it. It says, be friends with those who are wise. Be friends with those who are wise and you will become wise. Choose, choose fools to be your friends and you will have trouble. We have the Amplified Version up there from Proverbs 13, 20 and it reads, he who walks as a com companion with wise men will be wise. But the companions of conceited, dull-witted fools are fools themselves and will experience harm. So we have to be very careful, church. We have to be careful, or I should say we should be wise to use the wisdom from the word, not the wisdom of the world, but to use the wisdom of the word of God. Now, before I can pray for you this morning, I just need to share a little bit about this controlling spirit that I was talking to you on earlier that can lead you astray, and particularly that can set you up into ungodly ties. And this is about the Jezebel spirit. Now, as I said, the Jezebel spirit is a whole message in itself, and it's a spirit that can be very controlling. It can be a spirit that's manipulative. It's a spirit that definitely tries to take out churches, church leaders, pastors, generally lead them into sexual immorality. Uh, you've heard the stories over and over again of men of God being taken out 
you know, led astray by the enemy. And this is generally because of the Jezebel spirit that can lead people astray and can lead them away from the things of God. Now, I want to read to you the uh, two versions of this. First one is the Revelation 2.20 from the NLT. Um, it says, but I have this complaint. This is Jesus talking to the churches. He says, but I have this complaint against you. You are permitting that woman, that Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet, to lead my servants astray. The NIV says, nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman, Jezebel. It says, you tolerate that woman, Jezebel. Now, that word tolerate is meaning that you allow or you give permission to that spirit to lead you astray. Now, be, be very aware, church, that tolerance is not a fruit of the spirit. Jesus was saying that you tolerate her and that was a bad thing. He had it against them. Tolerance is not a fruit of the spirit. Now, so we don't need to tolerate evil. We don't need to tolerate an evil spirit. But please note that when I'm talking about Jezebel, I'm not referring to a woman as um, anyone can have a Jezebel spirit over them. In fact, um, it can be a man, it can be a child. I mean, just go to a shopping center and see how some of these children manipulate or try and control their parents. I used to do shopping center security and I can tell you these kids have these very, some really bad spirits over them. Uh, it's particularly a Jezebel spirit trying to control their parents. Um, but also the Jezebel spirit can be over territories, it can be over churches as well. However, my point is that the Jezebel spirit can be a reason why Christians are led astray, as we read in Revelation 20. And sadly, they end up away from church and they end up uh, away from fulfilling their calling in God. And I believe this is a reason why people can be attracted to people as set up by the enemy or through the spirit, where they end up being with people who have the same demons, the same bondages, the same issues they have themselves, or as I mentioned earlier, uh, stemming from trauma, childhood trauma particularly, where they end up uh, having a, a situation where they had an ungodly father, and they end up in a similar situation where they attracted to people who may have similar or the same issues, or in fact worse. Now, the Jezebel spirit can lead you astray, putting your thoughts into your soul like that person will change. You know, they, they might be on drugs, they might be a drunk, but you know what? As soon as I get with them, as soon as I marry them, that, that will all change. You know, they'll, they'll, stop, they'll stop abusing me, they'll stop drinking, they'll stop the drugs. But unfortunately, uh, that is a lie from the enemy. And I can assure you, they will not change. They will not change. They won't stop their addictions or their bondages unless they've repented and unless they become born again and follow Jesus wholeheartedly. Now, I will be praying for you very soon, uh, allowing you to search your heart to see if there's unforgiveness in your heart. Uh, maybe you need to renounce something. Maybe you need to break ties with people. Maybe you need to repent. Maybe you need to confess some sin. But it is very important that we search our heart and break ties with ungodly people, that if there's unforgiveness in, in your heart, that you need to forgive. But I just want to share a, a few of uh, signs that may show you that you have ungodly ties. Now, uh, the first thing it can be ongoing bad relationship. If you found yourself in a, a bad relationship over and over and over again, um, and there's a cycle of that, then this can be from an ungodly tie. It may be you have an unhealthy uh, attachment to an ungodly person uh, that is against the word of God if you're a Christian. Uh, if you may be obsessed with an ungodly person, you, uh, you may be taking on the traits of another person, showing bad signs, just like you're linked to them being an ungodly person. You may be uh, getting bound by the same characteristics and traits they have. Um, you may uh, remain in an abusive or violent relationship. Uh, you may have non-stop thoughts about a person from the past, someone that hurt you or is you still in love with and they were bad for you. That can be a sign that there's an ungodly tie. Um, and you, you may also keep objects from a past relationship, um, which you shouldn't really have if that person was not good for you and that was an ungodly relationship. And lastly, um, it may be something that you have in your heart 
due to past trauma. Uh, you may be bound through that trauma, having fear, anxiety, depression. Uh, you may have addictions yourself. And if, there, if you've been in a situation where you've had a trauma, particularly as a child or through an accident or through a death, and you're bound by fear, anxiety, depression, or addictions, then that could also be through an ungodly time. So there's a fair bit in that message, I know, but um, this is this uh, through a lot of research, uh, many years in dealing with praying for people with ties, and it's really to show you uh, things that you need to identify in, in seeing you set free from these ungodly ties. So we're gonna we're gonna begin a time of prayer right now. As I, um, it's a bit warm in here. Praise God. <laughs> it is warm in here. All right. Hallelujah. But I think if you can 